Hello everyone and welcome to Planet Linux. I'm glad you found this video. Today we're taking a look at why I may be making Linux Mint my new daily driver and why you may want to consider doing the same. We are currently running Linux Mint 18.1 this is, of course, the Cinnamon Edition, which is probably by far the most common and traditional edition, for lack of a better word. And there are many things, both on part of Linux Mint and Cinnamon, that make this, in my opinion, one of the best, uh, most ideal Linux distributions uh, of the current time. And that being said, being a profound distro hopper, there's a decent chance that my thoughts will change relatively soon, and a couple videos down the road you'll find me talking about making some other completely different distribution my new daily driver. So, call me hypocritical. But, nonetheless, I've been spending a lot of time with Linux Mint 18.1, and I have really fell in love with it for a few different reasons. And the first of which is the fact that Cinnamon, of course, is based off of GNOME 3. It's essentially forked from the project. Um, the Linux Mint team did not like what uh, the GNOME team did with the release of GNOME 3, which is understandable since it was a huge change. Whether you love it or hate it, we can admit that it was a big change. And they came up with a more traditional desktop experience that over the years has um, still relied more and more on the assets of GNOME 3 and GTK 3 using that modern code, but giving a much more traditional user interface. And there could be some diehard Linux or GNOME fans out there that say, oh, it looks too much like Windows. I hesitate to even mention Windows in these videos because I know I'll get haters. Uh, but honestly, put all of that aside, it's true that the Cinnamon desktop is a very clean and usable interface. It's familiar, and you can pick up and use it right away. And so I think having that Cinnamon desktop is a good first step in the right direction towards being simply usable. And the Linux Mint team has really made a point to take the good things that GNOME 3 has done and implement them into Cinnamon, while also improving on a lot of things. An example of this would be uh, the sound manager here in Linux Mint. Um, you have a lot more here, and the interface is a bit different than you would see typically in GNOME 3. Uh, you have a interesting layout here that shows the exact name and detail of each audio device as well as individual output uh, levels and settings. The same goes for this input page. Sound effects. This is something that got stripped out of GNOME 3 nearly completely. The sound effects page in GNOME 3 um, simply lets you choose an alert sound. It lets you change the sound effects for uh, many different events on the system here. As you can see, some have them set, some don't, though I actually wouldn't hear very many because the volume was down all the way. So I'll turn that up just a little. And you can change uh, volume levels for individual applications. Currently, the only thing running is the background speech dispatcher process, which is for text-to-speech on the system if the screen reader needs to use it. Uh, so it's things like that where sound uh, has been uh, improved. Another example would be backgrounds. Of course, we have our backgrounds from different versions of Linux Mint. <clears throat> you can import your own photos. Uh, and that's all available in GNOME 3. However, something that isn't here under the settings page is the ability to play backgrounds as a slideshow. With this enabled, you can select a folder on your system and it will run through all of the desktop backgrounds on it in a slideshow. And you can choose uh, how frequently it switches between images, 
uh, in a number of minutes. You can choose whether they play in random order or not, and how the images appear on screen, whether it's zooming or scaled or uh, as a tiled sort of mosaic. And yes, I understand that you can get background slideshow capabilities in GNOME via uh, GNOME shell extensions. But it's something where the Cinnamon, the Mint team has come in with Cinnamon, and they've really patched up a lot of areas of things that are missing or could be much improved in the user experience. And it just gives the whole Cinnamon desktop a very well-rounded and polished feel that you don't often see with a lot of other desktop environments and distributions as a whole. And that brings me to my last main point of polish and something that just brings the whole system together together very cohesively and that is the update manager and software managers um, I just realized my background got changed shoot and I doubt I can find the background I was using okay we will worry about that later um, so this this update and software managers. I get that uh, every distribution has their own package management, software management, uh, how it handles updates. But the one in Mint just feels so clean, so simple to use, and straightforward. We'll start with the software manager here. Of course, entering our password because it's Linux. We love entering our passwords. And this will take a few seconds to load up here, but you'll see that it's just such a clean interface that gives direct access to your categories. Um, application, it gives you some editor's picks up here, uh, or categories, excuse me. Uh, easy access to all these different applications. You can uh, view descriptions and screenshots, reviews. It's all just very easy to access, displayed in a very easy, convenient way. You've got a search box here, and it's something that you ha you can f often find similar features in other package management, like the Discover, uh, Discover Package Manager in KDE and Ubuntu and many other GNOME distributions software application. But Linux Mint just gives such a clean polished interface with it that blends in very well with the desktop and the icon theming and the same goes for the update manager um, uh, mine does not show any updates because I just ran updates before I started this video I shouldn't have uh, so I could show you but it just it's so simple I've pretty much never had issues with the mint update manager and that's definitely a lot to be said there because it seems like probably well over half of Linux distributions I try I run into some sort of issue regarding repositories, getting updates, uh, installing packages in the software manager, I have software managers freeze up and call it bad luck on my end perhaps but I just always seem to run into issues and I've really never had any problems with the Mint software and update managers and the one time I think I did have an issue with it not finding and not being able to locate an update it was as simple as it directed me to change mirrors uh, software mirrors and then refresh the list and it worked perfectly fine so between pretty much never having any issues and the one time I do it clearly explains what I need to do and how to fix the problem that's something that throughout as you use Linux Mint you'll find more and more there are there is a sense of polish to it with little things like that that you don't find in a lot of other distributions and of course Linux Mint is loosely based on Ubuntu I say loosely because it's not like uh, official Ubuntu flavors that use Ubuntu resources and applications it's its own distribution but it's based on the Ubuntu uh, typically long-term support releases and so you know it's stable at its core and with everything the Linux Mint team has done with the interface and Cinnamon uh, all of their applications 
it's just fantastic and it's something that whether you're a new Linux user or you're really experienced with it and you know exactly what you're doing it's just it's a fantastic distribution and it's easy to upgrade if you're coming from an older version say 18 to 18.1 you can do that through the update manager um, it's just one I'd recommend it's a great all-round distribution one I think everyone should give a try and until I find some other distro out there that tops any and all expectations I have for it then I'm I believe this is what I am looking to install on my permanent machine for the time being so I hope that the insight I've given in this video may uh, help you make that choice whether you're looking for a certain distribution to put on a computer or what you want to recommend to other people I would certainly give this a try give it a test drive uh, I hope this video has been helpful if it has been, if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. If there's anything you'd like to say, let me know. Post it in the comments. I do my best to reply to you. Uh, YouTube hasn't been giving me notifications for comments properly as of late, but I have been making a point to check for new comments once or twice a day, so I'll try to reply to yours if I'm able to see it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell to stay up to date with new content and whenever I post new videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you next time.